Hey, um, today let's see how you can escalate your privileges by abusing misconfigured file permissions. And I'm Aditya Nan Kumar. I'm a security researcher. You can reach out to me by mailing to root at adityanake.com. And this is my OSCP series. And as usual, all the information shared are for educational purposes only. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So we all know that everything is a file in Linux operating system. And each and every file has a certain type of permission. So there are three types of permission in general, which is R, W and X. So R means that basically the file is readable and W stands that the file is writable and X stands for the file to be executable. So you can list the permission of each file by typing ls and L space the file name which is going to list you the permission as well as the owner of the file as well as the group to which it belongs to and the dates of the, the date basically when the file has been accessed or created. So um, there, there are basically the, the permission is being denoted in nine bits. The first bit uh, stands for the file type. So as you can see in the screenshot, the first bit is being denoted as dash, which basically means that it's a regular file. Uh, sometimes uh, this dash will be replaced instead of D, which basically means that it's a directory and it's not a file. But as we know, everything in Linux is a file, which means even directories are just files that that links other files so yeah uh, if it's a directory you will have d in first place but this is just a regular file and that is why it's starting with a dash and the next three bits which is uh, rwx that belongs to the owner so here you can see rw dash which means those three bits belongs to the permission of the owner so which means that the owner has a read and write permission and not execute permission and the next three bits which is r dash dash uh, denotes the permission of the group to which the file belongs to so which basically means that anyone who belongs to the group can read the file but they cannot write or execute the file and the final three bits uh, basically denotes the permission of other users basically whoever who does not belong to the group as well as not the owner everything uh, the rest of other people would come under this other group so everyone can read the file which is like world readable so that's why it's denoted by r and but they cannot write to the file or they cannot execute the file so that's basically it and in order to understand the file permissions in depth we must have come across this command called chmod 777 uh, so what exactly the chmod does well chmod is like uh, for modifying the permission of a file and you must have come across this command called chown as well which is basically to change the owner of the file so why why exactly 777 and what exactly this command command does so CH7, CH777 basically denotes to assign full permission to a file, which means that anyone can read, write and execute the file. So that's why it roughly translate to RWX, 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 which means that even the owner of the file can read, write and execute the, the group to which the file belongs to can read, write and execute. And uh, I mean, basically any other in the file, any other user in the system can read, write and execute. So, uh, but again, um, it doesn't explain why come up with the number seven in order to know that we must have to understand how the permissions are being represented in binary. So the execute permission in binary is represented as zero zero one, which in decimal is converted to one uh, and the write in binary is represented to zero one zero, which in turn, if it's converted to decimal, it will be two and the read in binary is represented as 100 which in turn if converted into decimal will result in 4 so that's basically it so if if there is 0 uh, if you denote 0 it basically means that there is no permission so so if you assign ch mod 000 that basically means that the file has no permission to execute uh, no one can execute the file or read the file or write the file and uh, if you if you assign 111 that basically means that anyone can um, execute the file uh, so one belongs to uh, one denotes to execute and two uh, in decimal denotes to write permission so three uh, in decimal uh, if you if you want to get three then you have to add two plus one which is write and execute so uh, that's the only way you, you're going to get three which means that uh, if you're going to assign the decimal three as a permission then it basically means that you're assigning write and execute permission and four in decimal uh, denotes to read permission and five in order to get five uh, we must add uh, 
O plus one, which basically means that uh, you're gonna add, the, you're gonna assign read and write, uh, read and execute permissions, and uh, six. Uh, in order to get six, there is this only one combination, which is four plus two, which means that you're gonna assign read and write permissions. And finally, we have seven, which basically means that you're assigning four plus two plus one, which is uh, seven, which is read plus write plus execute. Uh, this is why we are having uh, so the uh, the first seven ch mods in the C in the command ch mod seven 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 the first seven represents to the uh, owner of the file so the owner has rwx permissions and the next seven belongs to the group so the group also has rwx permissions and finally the other users also has rwx permissions so that's what ch mod 777 is uh let's look at further few examples to uh, get a good understanding of it um so let's take a number 755 so th these type of uh, uh, permissions are usually seen in web servers it's very commonly used in web servers and as you can see from the seven uh, the first bit seven basically denotes to the permission of the user which means that the uh, which means that the owner has uh, uh, read write and execute permissions and then the second bit is five which means this denotes the permission of the group to which it belongs to so in order to get five there is only one combination which is four plus one which means that uh, the group can read as well as execute but they cannot write to the file as well as the next five uh, the last five uh, denotes to the permission of the uh, other users uh, which basically means that also they can only uh, execute and read the file but they cannot write to the file and looking at the next example 644 uh, which basically means that in order to get six uh, you, you're gonna add four plus two which basically means that the owner can read and write to the file but he cannot execute the file and everyone else uh, can uh, only read which means because it's just four and four so the second four denotes to the permission of the group and the final four denotes to the permission of the uh, other users uh, so yeah others can only read the file and no one can write to the file uh, except the owner of course and finally we have 655 which basically means that the owner can read as well as write to the file and everyone else can uh, uh, read and execute the file file but they cannot uh, uh, write to the file so that's basically it i hope now you have a clear understanding about how the permissions work in linux All right, now let's take a look at a real world example. So this is one of my demo machines. And right now I am as a low privilege user. So as you can see from my UID, which is thousand, which is clearly not root. And my GID belongs to thousand as well, which means that I belong to the group user as well as uh, these are several other groups to which I belong to. So I'm clearly not of some higher privileges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to escalate my privileges by abusing misconfigured five permissions. So you can use some kind of automated Linux, uh, Linux uh, scripts to uh, seek for these files. For example, Linenum is a great source for finding such kind of files to get the misconfigured files but what i'm going to show right now is i'm going to show you a great example uh before that let me uh, show you a real world example of what permissions are so if you if you look at my home directory this is my home directory which is home slash user which means this home directory belongs to me and if you have a look at this file um this is the permission that i was talking about the first bit just denotes that it's a regular file uh, and this three bits basically denotes that uh, permission of a user and the next three bits uh, these three bits uh, denotes to the permission of the group and in this case uh, this belongs to the user group as well so it's not a problem and then the last three bits denotes to the permission for the others so in this case no one else in the system can read my bash history other than me of course because i only have uh, both read as well as write permissions so only i can do that and then if you take an example of this uh, directory as you can see the first bit uh, denotes to d which means this is basically a directory and uh, i have read write and execute permissions and everyone who belongs to the user group has read and execute permissions and everyone else has read as well as execute permissions so in this case it's basically seven and four five five so because 
R stands for 4 and X stands for 1 which means if you add 4 plus 1 it's 5 and if you add 4 plus 1 it's 5 so it's 7 5 5 um, yeah so that's basically it and now let's get to the real world example so there are two crucial files in Linux uh, that contains the user and password information one is etc slash password though the name contains uh, password this basically doesn't contain password so this is basically a file that has all the users information and their home directory and their corresponding shell and there is another uh, file called etc slash shadow which basically contains the user password passwords and um, hashes so as you can see uh, this uh, password file and this shadow file both of them are clearly misconfigured in this case if you have a look at this machine as you can see everyone else can write to the file which means that even if you are not root even if you are any user in the system you can basically write to the file so even though uh, the etc slash password does not contain uh, any sensitive information you can overwrite this file to basically change someone else's password let me show you how uh, let's have a look at the password file first of all so this password file shows you what are all the available users in the system um as you can see uses as well the, as well as the service accounts so mysql sshd these are all basically the accounts used by the ssh team in mysql service um and so on so so if you see this first uh, part specifically defines the username as well as this is the password part so as I said the password file does not contain the password that's why you are seeing an X here and the next part is the user ID and the next part is the group ID and then uh, you have the uh, name and you have the home directory and then the shell the corresponding shell to each user and as you can see let me see yeah so you can find the user which is i'm currently right now and my shell is bash and this is my home directory and so on so and this is my uid gid uh, etc so now what i can do is although you can't read any password from here you can overwrite the password so what i'm gonna do right now is i'm gonna generate a password for uh, root user so you can use open ssl password and you can give any arbitrary password in this case i'm, I'm gonna give two as a password so it's gonna generate a random password uh using the i mean uh encrypted text using the given password what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go back to uh the password file and instead of x i'm gonna replace it with the generated content and i'm gonna save the file so now let's see if we can escalate our privileges to root um t o o r and there you go as you can see i am now root and my group belongs to root as well so this is how you can uh, abuse the uh, file permissions uh, misconfiguration to escalate your privileges from a low level user to a high level user. This is one of the examples. So yeah, that's about it for today and see you later in the next video. Bye bye.